Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week and I look forward to what might happen in coming weeks. And hopefully, lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, the stock market enjoyed a nice rebound in the last week as earnings brought big moves in both directions and stocks. And overall, investors were happy putting money back to work in the indexes. Our target was for a rebound in the S&P 500 between 39.72 and 40.53, which was hit, uh, as that nicely followed our analysis and cycle pattern projections. Are you new to, to uh, cycle analysis? Please do watch my lesson coming up on the SPY just in a few minutes. <clears throat> Monday, an upside attempt failed last week as Apple warned of a hiring slowdown. Early gains turned into losses, and the S&P 500 closed down 32 points. And that was really the worst of it for the week, as the rest of it saw a lot of buying. Tuesday, there was a report of a $21 billion buy program, uh, which sent the market up, really up. Uh, that came after, in the pre-market, Russia said that they were going to restart uh, that natural gas flow to Europe. The S&P 500, on Tuesday, closed up 105 points rallied early and never looked back. Wednesday, also helping the techs move up, was Netflix. Their subscriber loss was much smaller than it was expected, and Netflix got a bounce. However, when you look at what happened from its peak, down 75%, well, it was entitled to a bounce. Overall, Wednesday was a choppy day with decent gains. Thursday, mixed earnings for some pretty big stocks, uh, saw uh, uh, AT&T miss down 7%, UAL big miss down about 10%, but Tesla beats, and that moved up 10% and lifted the NASDAQ again. The NASDAQ really was a leader. Indexes, well, they briefly moved to the downside early in the day as ECB raised their rates a uh, half a percent all the way up to zero. Uh, and, uh, of course, that's the issue there at zero. And the U.S. has much higher rates, and that has brought the dollar strength, which is now subsiding. And there was also the report came out that President Biden was positive for COVID-19. So that brought these dips. But then buyers came back, pretty much as we saw all week long. Friday, well, Mark was pretty stable early on, despite a crash in Snap stock down about 38% SNAP. Well, that snapped to the downside again. Earnings were a huge miss. This is an online ad slump. And the, the future looked so dark to them that they refused to give any forecasts. Well, of course, social media stocks dumped. Moved on pretty uh, strongly uh, overnight. Uh, Meta down 6% right now. Uh, Pinterest down about 12%. Uh, and that stock, Pinterest, P-I-N-S, has moved down from 90 to 16. So much for all those stay-at-home stocks. Google, down about 3%. And that's a big hit for that company. Uh, and uh, Twitter, also in this category of social media, moved down small. They had a big loss, but they're blaming that loss on Elon Musk, uh, money that they had to spend based on uh, the uh, merger or, uh, now, which is going to court. So overall, it looked like a pretty mixed day. Uh, the Dow was up early as American Express showed some very strong earnings. But then markets uh, succumbed to profit-taking. Uh, and uh, here as we are uh, on Friday at midday uh, with uh, the market having uh, some pretty small losses, less than 1%, after very sizable gains. As a matter of fact, uh, the stock market has moved up 10% from its low pretty good gain. And if you remember, last week we showed that scenario where there would be some 13 and more percent gain 
uh, comparing uh, 2008 to 2022 uh, before the stock market succumbed again uh, to selling. But with this good upside week for the stock market, the S&P came, as we said, into our projected upside target zone. Momentum conditions are now a positive in all time frames, and that suggests the rebound has more to go. Still, short-term patterns say that uh, there will be a dip into early August, and we might have started that today. Uh, we're no longer looking for new lows in early August, uh, as all of these internals and everything has improved, uh, but still a dip into that time period. And then uh, another rally probably into mid-August. That is a slight revision for us, but then it doesn't change the longer-term picture. There is big risk that comes back. Uh, as the market is likely to be moving down into the fall time, uh, late September, October potentially. And I'll show you that and how I come to that analysis coming up. Uh, there's going to be two parts to that. I'm going to give you a really uh, good lesson uh, in cycle analysis as I break that down. Uh, and also, I'm going to show you a special wave coming up. And within that special, I'm going to show you the internals and how we see those for the S&P 500 in multiple time frame. So you're going to want to watch all of that uh, coming right through the <clears throat> special that I'm going to show you. For the stock market for the week, major indexes up about 3%. They were up before or better, but now they have pulled back some. Uh, Dow Jones is the weakest of the indexes, uh, and uh, the other ones are all pretty equally up. Um, bond market, 30s gain about one three quarter points. That puts the 10-year yields on the TNX. Uh, down 13 basis points. Um, members, you're going to want to go look at the charts that we updated today in the treasuries. They are really beautiful, and we added in the projections. We were looking for this rally in the bond market, and it came pretty perfectly. So please do uh, go look at those charts, which uh, Level 4 members have them right now, and they'll be available for uh, other members uh, in the next several hours. Gold market gains about $25, silver about $0.12, cents. so gold a little bit stronger, but the weakening dollar is helping. We have talked about this being a very important time for the metals, uh, where a bottoming looks like it's uh, coming into place. Uh, and uh, I told you that the market had a lot of risk coming into this time frame, uh, and gold and silver took some big hits, and there was a, what I believe a capitulation. And uh, I've made no secret that I have been accumulating some physical silver and now buying uh, some silver stock in here. And I'm not giving you uh, uh, any uh, kind of uh, reason to buy other than you talking to uh, your own uh, financial advisors. Uh, we, we never do that. You know, we just share our analysis. And sometimes I'll tell you what I'm doing. So I like SIL because it gets some pretty big volatility in the silver stocks, pretty strong beta. When that starts to move up. So <clears throat> I think that it's time to start looking at that uh, as uh, our members are have been seeing that analysis and the bottom and getting ready to come in. Uh, the uh, dollar moves down about 1.5%. They hit our uh, upside target, actually missed it by about two tenths of a percent, <laughs> and then turned down. And now, uh, we're looking for potential for it to move down under 105 for the DXY in the next couple of weeks. Oil down 60 cents, and uh, it's a really um, potential for a little bit more on the upside in here, but there's risk to fall below $90. You want to see all of that analysis, please watch our Future Speak show. RV does an incredible job showing uh, 24 different futures contracts. That's on Wednesdays for level 2, 3, and 4 members. So that's everything that I have for this opening right now. I'm a little bit hoarse, as you can hear, uh, but not really sick. And coming up in this show, uh, Arby's going to give you a preview uh, looking at short-term swing trade planning, and he's going to show you the XBI. I'm going to take you through uh, the stock market analysis on the S&P 500. I'm going to take you step by step looking at the SPY and uh, how on that intermediate analysis uh, I uh, look at and do this analysis in the SPY and you'll get a good idea of the kind of work that we do in uh, all of our futures and ETFs and stocks that's close to like 400 symbols 
uh, that we do a tremendous amount of work and that's why we have a team of four analysts uh, and then I'm going to show you the membership special now you're going to want to uh, speed through that I know but um, I'm sneaking in some multiple time frame analysis in there and I'm going to demonstrate uh, our live chart streams and you'll be able to see what the multiple time frame conditions are that I'm talking about in the S&P 500 uh, that have improved than have been lifting the stock market. So you'll see the SPY proprietary indicators and when did they actually go positive. Uh, and you'll see why being a level 4 member is so important because you get the broadest support uh, for your trading, I think, anywhere. And then Katie's going to bring you multiple time frame analysis on SMH. Those semiconductors are bottoming and she's going to show you a potential trade setup there that I think you're going to like. So that is what's coming up in this show. So please watch the whole show, and I think you're going to love it. Uh, go to AskLim.com and explore. Take a look. We have so much on there. It's unbelievable. You could become a free member, and you'll get a lot of notifications from us and stuff that's going on. Become a Level 1 member, and you're going to get uh, our stock index report daily, and uh, you'll just be blown away by how comprehensive that is if you're interested in the markets just for Level 1. <clears throat> 45 bucks for three months. How can you not do that? Uh, go to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, click our notification bell, and do like this video. Give it a thumbs up. On Twitter, follow us at Ask Slim. And any questions you might have on all of our offerings of education and analysis, write to Matt at AskSlim.com. All right, this is a preview of a member video. Uh, this is a uh, short-term swing trade planning video uh, in which RV presents many different symbols. Uh, it, we're going to preview this and show you the XBI, uh, which is a positive setup, and I think you're going to think it is just uh, so interesting. And Everything we do is about giving lessons on our style uh, of analysis and uh, for you to learn more and more each time. So uh, I think you're going to find uh, this extremely valuable. Now let's shift over to the next one. We will look at the XBI. We have been highlighting this for um, really some time here as we did see this act a lot better than the overall market. And then we saw a little flag forming and then you can see that that has turned up. I'll show you that on the daily. First, for the weekly time frame, again, we have a dominant cycle broken up into minor halves and we were due to form a low and you can see if i zoom out really nice clarity on these uh, charts right here in xbi with key lows that have formed close to that idealized timing here for many many years so let's go ahead and zoom in again we are in the rising phase very clearly right here it's reasonable to get into the middle of this zone that zone comes in from 85.52 to 94.96 so i look for a move into that 95 dollar level here prior to risk picking up here but you'll note this is acting fairly well this looks more like a little flag forming on the weekly time frame and we still look for this to turn back up we have a mid-cycle low on the weekly due right around that middle part of october time period so just keep that on the radar as well daily chart again we have been monitoring this blue cycle since 621, which is around this time period right here. And we are looking for this to hold and really act up well. And you can see it really has. Note that this is forming a very swamped cycle as well in the context of a positive daily ribbon acting nicely. We are really have almost no time left for a pullback. We can see that the low is due 714 to 721. And what we look for is this zone from 78.39 to uh, 75.30 to really hold it on the downside and then look for a move to new swing highs. Now, this zone right here from 84.78 to 88.19 was drawn using this set of anchors right there. So that low to that high to that low. This would be like a minor half cycle if I had drawn it on the chart. And let me just draw it for you so, you so you can see what this looks like. So we're going to use our Fib tool. Go to the cycle low. Go to the cycle high. Go to the cycle low, which would be like a minor half, as I just said here. And that's where we got the 78.6 to the 100. So I just wanted to show that to you so you can see where these levels came from. These levels 
came from this higher low right here. So I just wanted to let you know of that as well. So those are our, our levels and why we have the levels we do on the XBI. I just wanted to walk through that uh, for you here. But basically, we have very little time on the downside likely, and we look for this to turn right back up and make new swing highs shortly in the XBI. Super job on that, Arby. Thanks a lot. And that XBI is very interesting. Okay, stock market, S&P 500, SPY, building the intermediate analysis. So I'm going to take you through uh, some step-by-steps in here of when I begin to look at a chart and how I evaluate the chart, how I see the cyclical patterns in there, of course, with my trained eye, and want to teach you how to do the same thing. And, of course, you can always take our cycle analysis workshop and go to the front page under workshops, and you can see some details on that uh, and a free video on what that looks like. So we're going to take this step by step, as I say, and then uh, in the, there'll be a second phase to this uh, in the level four special I'm going to offer following this, where I look at our proprietary indicators running live, and you'll be able to get a sense for uh, the multiple time frames. Right now, I'm going to focus on the weekly chart uh, looking at SPY. So uh, here is the SPY chart. And you can see there, looking at it, that it's basically a, a general uh, candlestick that you may see. Now, there's a couple studies to, uh, on here. First of all, we have uh, two moving average. It's the 13 and 34, a weak, simple moving average. That is uh, what is uh, what we like to use on our weekly chart. And generally, uh, when they're configured in a positive way, where the 13 is above the 34, it's a uh, positive condition, and when they roll over and cross over, <clears throat> then you get into a more negative condition. Often, the 13 is a support, as you see right in here, uh, or a resistance. When it gets very far from that 34-week moving average, which it did right here at the pandemic bottom, it often comes back up to it. Now, if this continues to move down in here, eventually it'll come back and tag that 34-week moving average. So that's just a sense for what we have in here. Also, we have our reversal scout, which is our momentum indicator, and also an indicator that helps us identify the um, cyclical patterns that are in here. Of course, cycles are uh, measured from trough to trough or low to low. And often they have very uh, common um, lengths uh, within the cycles. When you have a market that is very skewed in one direction or the other, sometimes they're tough to read. Uh, and uh, sometimes when there's good volatility, they're easy to read. And you're going to see that in here as I move to the next slide. So we're going to look here at slide number two. And here you can see we're adding in cycle brackets. Now, what we've identified looking in here is that there is a dominant cycle right over here. The cycle, again, is from this low here at the pandemic bottom. The dominant cycle right in here is 26 weeks. So it's this period right in here is 26 weeks. This one right in here is almost unidentifiable. This is what we say when a cycle goes invisible or swamped, when it should be in a corrective period, as you saw right over here, but it doesn't really have a measurable decline, just this little one right in here, which isn't very readable. And that happens in very strong markets. There were one, two, and three of those with swamped type looks to them. And then you can see right in here, the low right here and the low here were much more readable in this same uh, uh, pattern. As you see now, uh, I'm going to move to the next slide in here, and we're going to get more and more information. You can see uh, as I do this how we start to look in here. So now I've put the actual dominant cycle lines on the chart on top, and you can see how this, which is the ideal cycle, this is not actually cycles, this is just a guide to help us understand the length in here, which from this low to this low is about 26 weeks. They're, uh, the, the average uh, cycle is what we really look at. They're never going to be perfect, uh, but you can see one, two, three rising cycles, 
and then a cycle that actually brought the peak and a cycle that brought the bear market that we're in right now. Now we believe this is incomplete and I'll show you more about that as we go forward. You'll also note how the reversal scout uh, traces out that cycle beautifully in here as it did in here but not as clear because of the upward pressure that was in there and that show you see that in this 13 week moving average and then it uh, rallies and then rolls over again very early in here I'll talk more about what that means when it peaks early here then it started to come down and based on what we see in here there's an indication that this decline is not over with because the length takes it out here to September or early October. Show you a little bit more about that as we move uh, to the S&P 500 again with more information. And now you can see I've added in the, the minor cycles in here, which uh, are the 13 week up on the chart and you can see how they resolve themselves and also added in these vertical cycle lines which are the actual points that the cycles bottom. So you can see in here, this was pretty perfect. This bottomed early, which by the way, often happens in a, in a rising market. Declining markets tend to bottom later. This one a little bit long, as you can see, this one pretty spot on, not bad. And this one points to, when you see these two vertical lines right over here, that's a low, maybe late August, early September, all the way out over here to early October. So this is where we're starting to get that September, October, and one more downside move. You'll note that this minor cycle right in here is forming in that rally a bear flag. Now, this is what happens when you have a big downward momentum in here and then the minor cycle pushes up, it can't go very far because the dominant pressures are still to the downside, and that's how you build a flag like this. Actually, if you take our cycle analysis workshop, module number nine talks about how cycles actually build these patterns, uh, and you learn a lot by taking that. So, this right over here shows a flattening out right over here of momentum. It's improving a little bit, as you can see. Uh, but then there is risk over here when this market turns down that it's going to get sold again and come down to, well, to some reasonable projections, which I'll show you in just a moment. So you can see in here the clear uh, added minor cycles. You can see the dominant cycle lines and how the cycles do have averages in time that are fairly close. The principle of variance says that it will vary by some amount, and usually it's three or four bars in either direction. And uh, if it varies beyond that, then we know that there is some shift going on. And then we look at how to analyze the energetic shifts that are happening. There is so much incredible information that you get by this style of analysis. Here you can see right over here is uh, the next uh, phase in here, and I'm showing configurations and cycle translations and the head and shoulders top as that formed. So this you can see are the uh, what we call configurations as right in here the market was moving up, each of these cycles were positive positively configured. Each of them peaked on the right side of the cycles, uh, which means that they were positively translated. When you have a positively translated cycle in a bullish configuration, that says the next cycle will go to a new high, as it did here and here and here. But look what happened here. This configured negatively, and that said there was a major top in. When you got the rally and hit resistance and then came down and broke, well, that made your head and shoulders top. Now we're getting a head and shoulders measured move down over here, which is to about, well, 320 or 325 on the SPY. Also, you can see in here this uh, flag in here uh, still, and that's likely to turn down and move down into this area. So you see the translations turn negative. That essentially took your uptrend right in here and made it into a topping and into a negative trend, as you see right now there. You'll see more of that as we move into the next stage. Here you could see our projections in here and what really happened. Government stimulus was extreme, extreme valuations. You got up to 200% uh, S&P 500 to GDP. It then began to roll over, uh, made this head and shoulders top, and you have this downward motion in here, and the measured move down over here to about 3200 
We also uh, have, that's 32 on the SPY, 3200 on the SPY, on the SPX, and uh, there's also important supports that occur somewhere around 30, uh, 350 in here, and then down at that 3200 level. So uh, you can see in there that the Fed withdrawal stimulus all of a sudden brought that uh, decline in here, the head and shoulders top. And you can see these yellow areas right in here. Those are the actual periods of risk where each of these declines should come. When you have this big upward momentum, they're not very strong. When the momentum changes to negative, they're strong. And that's why we think there's a strong decline coming right there on the downside. So that's a look at the SPY. Oops, wrong one to show you right there. And the last one we're going to look at right in here is uh, these final projections down to these supports. And the fact that there is another rally likely coming right out over here. <coughs> So that's a, a good look at, you know, where you get this bottom timing here in September, October, and then these next cycles over here, which give you a rally. We actually think that bear market low is at the bottom of this cycle, which is in early 2023. Everybody thinks that the lows will come somewhere in here and the new bull market will resume or has resumed. But looking at this, you can see the probabilities of that are very low. So decline how into September, October and uh, then uh, the likelihood of some kind of a move. 350 on the SPY is reasonable. 320 on the SPY is possible in that time. So that's how we get this analysis that we referred to uh, in the S&P 500 and building into that analysis. And I hope you found that very interesting. Coming up, uh, we have a membership special, and I'm going to show you our proprietary indicators, chart streams. Don't scroll forward because you're going to want to see these chart streams and what the conditions are in the market now in multiple time frames. Here is our Level 4 membership special. Level 4 membership special has great content and services for trading and for investing. Uh, level 4 top tier, uh, special trial, final three days for first time subs and upgrades if you're in one of our lower levels you're going to get our multiple time frame uh, charts an entire focus list on 84 symbols with the cycle analysis you can import them save view live on the thinkorswim platform yes you need to have thinkorswim or you want to choose level three ask them proprietary studies you'll get our slim ribbon slim ribbon po reversal scout mci obi and more i'll show you those in a moment and you can import and save them and have them live on your thinkorswim platform uh, you'll have our thinkorswim grid archive with all of our custom charts and best indicators and all of our support resources uh, chart analysis training q a with the slim analysts in the discord channel and uh, best practices using our custom charts and studies and exclusive free webinars that we put on and full membership access to everything levels three two and one go to askthem.com for details on what's in those levels that's a special three-month trial it's 35 percent off for level four it's only 375 that's 101 dollars or so per month versus the regular 159 it's a one-time use but this is going to give you a great sense for three months of the type of work that we do now here's a deeper look at the SPY as we look at chart streams and I want you to see what our live broadcast looks like and what we we uh, uh, cover. You can get our proprietary indicators on any symbol if you're level four and have access to all of these uh, just by downloading our special grids. Uh, and I'm going to show you that right now. Uh, this is the Slim chart streams page right there. <clears throat> all of these things you're looking at right now, our SI, our inner day, and these other nine symbols are running live and broadcasting right now with all our proprietary indicators. This is the SPY, which I wanted to show you, which is live right now. So what the information is that you get is uh, looking here, uh, you can see just this little turn up there in the weekly. This is the weekly. We don't, we only show in here the um, reversal scalp because we want you to see what the dominant conditions are in the market. So here you have the daily chart. You can see in here the reversal scout turning up and being positive as it moves into our target zone that we talked about right there. Uh, the cycle patterns that are in there and the 
potential move down into August that we've talked about. This is the uh, uh, unbelievable slim ribbon PO, which gives you signals uh, here of uh, momentum changes and resumptions. This just did turn green right there. Uh, and uh, I'm going to scroll it here a little bit because I want you to see what's on the bottom right over there. Uh, you can see that our market condition indicator, uh, which is over here, and the uh, right over here is the uh, option bias indicator was red and negative for a long period of time, and now that has neutralized here. Here down over here is the market condition indicator. It's just barely getting up to the swing zone. These all are giving a sense that while the market's rallying, it's not in the greatest condition. The longer term trends are still weighing on it on the downside. You will also get our two hour charts right here, uh, and you can see in here uh, how the uh, condition turned green right at that point. Uh, that was the slim ribbon PO. Actually, it was green right there, and then gave you the momentum signal on the upside, how that exploded to the upside at that point right there. Let's just bring this down so you can see all of that. Coming up to that target zone of the FIB extensions, and right over here is the same uh, indicators that you can get on the 15-minute chart, and this is uh, just like you will see, but more information on the uh, SIR interday live stream and you can see in there how it turned negative right there and this decline in here is moving against positive conditions right over here this suggests that uh, there will be another move to the upside so overall the conditions are looking on a short-term basis positive here on the daily positive here on the two hour and the really short term pulling back which says pretty likely that the market will be moving back to the upside. Improvements in the longer term indicators, but still being weighed down. And that's going to stop the market from moving probably past this daily resistance up over here. That's uh, about 404 uh, that you're looking at there uh, on the daily uh, on the SPY. So I wanted you to see that. I thought it was very interesting. You can get all our proprietary indicators <coughs> to put on uh, your Thinkorswim platform and do it on any symbol you want. Uh, by just uploading our grids. So what I showed you were the live grids broadcast, but a level four member gets uh, those grids and you can put any symbol into them at all that you want. This top tier level four uh, special trial, there's only three days left on this. So this is the time to do it. You'll get everything in all of our levels, four, three, two, and one. Go to askthem.com for details on the membership page. That's uh, $303.75. It's only $101 per month for all of our work. Unbelievable versus $159 a month, which even then is an unbelievable deal for the incredible hours that our four, uh, four uh, different analysts put into this work. It's best with the Thinkorswim platform uh, to use uh, and this one-time special. Again, if you don't want to use Thinkorswim or open one of those accounts, then a level three membership will work for you and you'll get most of what I just showed you, but in static version really, and uh, you'll be able to get all of our broadcasts also. So uh, if you want a level three special, you can write to man at asslim.com uh, for that also. That's it. I wanted to show you that special. Uh, coming now is multiple time frame analysis in SMH. Katie's going to give you a great lesson on a positive setup in there uh, in the semiconductors, and I think you're going to find this great. Hi, this is Katie with Ask Slim. On your screen is the Cycle Low Timing Tracker, which is the tool that we've developed to help us identify opportunities that might be setting up coming into cycle lows, as well as coming out of them in both the intermediate and short-term time frames. Now in cycle analysis, the principle of synchronicity refers in one way to important lows occurring together. So when we get an intermediate term low forming and moving up into the rising phase of the next cycle, that same thing is occurring on the shorter time frame. Because of the energy of these multiple cycles pushing up together into their new rise phases, there's the opportunity for some lucrative moves. So if you look closely at the cycle low timing tracker, you'll notice that an entire sector is showing up on here, and that is the semiconductors. We have applied materials, AMD, Broadcom, Micron, NVIDIA, and the semiconductor ETF, the SMH, all showing up in various boxes on here as they go through the bottoming process on their respective charts. Let's take a look at the semiconductor ETF, the SMH. 
This is a five-year weekly chart of SMH, and here you can see we are three weeks off the cycle low and moving up nicely. We still do have negative momentum, as indicated by our proprietary reversal scout, and we do want to see that turn positive, but it is starting to curl up. Now, this prior cycle was negatively configured with a left-hand translation, meaning that the cycle peak occurred over here at the beginning of the cycle and then spent the whole cycle declining, ending up much lower than where it began. Therefore, the probabilities favor not being able to take out that prior cycle high, and for that reason, we are projecting only up to the top of this resistance zone at about $250. Over here on the daily chart, notice what is happening. In this current cycle, we've gotten up through this resistance zone and approaching the 78.6% FIB. Momentum is positive with both the reversal scout as well as the slim ribbon. Now the shape of this cycle is suggesting to us that it will form a basing cycle, which is when we get a positively configured cycle that ends higher than where it began after one or more negatively configured cycles. This tells us that the energies in the market are changing and becoming more positive. So what we're projecting is for SMH to get maybe up as high as this 78.6% FIB in the current cycle that comes in at about 36 and a half. And then as we retrace into this daily cycle timing window, when we expect the current cycle to make its low, uh, we'd like to see this support zone hold. This is currently from about 214 down to about 205, but the zone is rising as SMH continues to make higher highs in this cycle. So if SMH can do this, we would consider that support zone as a good long side opportunity setting up in SMH. And the analysis is similar in many of the semiconductor stocks, so this is a sector to keep your eye on. To learn more about cycle analysis and our tools and services, please come visit us at AskSlim.com. Super work, Katie. You really get a sense for how valuable that uh, cycle low tracker is looking at that. Katie knows this stuff as well as anybody, and she is a great teacher. So give Casey, uh, Katie kudos on that uh, for sure. Just absolutely great work, and she is terrific. She's going to be bringing a lot now about combining uh, our analysis with option trading, uh, and she's beginning to do that in our Discord channel and uh, creating some videos on that. So uh, Katie, uh, just a super, super cycle analyst and a great teacher. Thanks for that. All right, that wraps us up. I want to make sure that you go to AskSlim.com. Make sure you subscribe, share our work uh, so that uh, they can see, other people can see what we bring. If you're new, become a free member or maybe a level one member. Subscribe to this channel on YouTube and click that bell, the notification bell, so you know when we put up videos. Uh, and do like this video. Uh, watch a member videos in the playlist. And you'll get a good idea of the work that we do. On Twitter, follow us at Ask Slim. And for any questions on our membership info uh, or huge offerings of education and analysis, please write Matt at AskSlim.com. That's it for this show. Uh, I want you to be so incredibly careful because it is so crazy out there. And I'm always wishing you great trading. Well, I'm going to the city and I'm going to do a city show.